Hello and welcome to the Daily Royal. My name is Shelby and I have been a royal watcher for the past 10 years. In this podcast, I talk about the daily events of seven of the European monarchies. So I talk about Belgium, the UK, Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. I upload Monday through Friday with occasional bonus episodes here and there. Today, we are talking about all of the events from Monday, August 16th through today, which is Sunday, August 22nd of 2021. You guys, it is going to be, it has been, I guess, rather a busy week. Oh my goodness. It's been crazy. There's been so many things happening, so many updates. Luckily, Um, A lot of, at least in Denmark, a lot of the events have been kind of all around one event. So that's how we'll cover it. Um, But other than that, everything's been different. I mentioned that these, these next two weeks, so this week and next week, will be a little bit more busy from the Scandinavian royals as they come back earlier. I think their school season starts earlier is what it seems like. Um... Because that's, you know, kind of like the unofficial thing for summer is like it's very much based in the school calendar, Um, especially for royals who have young children. So, or youngish, like still in school children. So, um, it does still seem like it's scheduled to be quiet this week from Belgium, the Netherlands, and Spain, um, as well as probably the UK as well. And we'll just continue with the Scandinavians this week. Now, a couple of updates from me, kind of personal-ish. So for me, this week coming up, so from tomorrow through till next Saturday, I am really going to be, I'm disappearing from the internet, essentially. Um, I'm not going to be posting on my website or social media this week. I will do a catch-up Sunday and Monday. Um, So next Sunday and Monday, I will start catching up on things. So the 29th and 30th. Um, But I am... August for me was supposed to be a break. And it's not the... It's not that I didn't have a break from the podcast. I have, and it's been lovely. Um, But I started a new job, and my brain has not had its time to rest, Um, which it's fine. It's a really good thing. Um, I, I think, I hope it's a really good thing. So far, it seems really good. However, because I started a new job, my brain got overloaded with information over the past two weeks since I got hired and started. Um, and so I just need a break. So I'm just going to be really quiet on social media. I'm still probably going to do some projects behind the scenes, um, because I don't really know how to stop, but I really want to get my head right before we jump in to September, um, in terms of Royals and, um, October is a marathon month. Um, September is usually like pretty chill, kind of like July and then October and November are marathons. And then in December, um, I'll probably go every day for the first week and then go kind of weekly from there. And we'll see if I do anything around the holiday season. Last year, I completely took a break from December. Like I didn't record at all in December, maybe like the first and the second. And then I stopped. Um, and that was like a mental health thing for me. I don't want to do that this time around, but I think I'll do something similar to August and where it's like a weekly update. I know December is a far time away, like it's four months away, but I just want to be prepared. But I do expect that I'll probably take, um, Christmas and New Year's that week off and then come back on January 1st with like, um, speech highlights, Um, kind of like I did this year, um, speech highlights as well as, um, year in review kind of episode and then jump into daily again in that like second week of January. Um, so that's just like a little update on where we're headed, where we're at right now. And now we are going to jump in. Um, I am 
halfway done with my new transitions, but they're not done yet, so those will be a surprise when we start daily episodes again um, because I'm not perfectly happy with them yet. So I will have them done by September when we go back into daily episodes. Um, so we are going to jump in with our updates. We're going to do this casually like we have the rest of the time. And we are going to start with Belgium. Um, so there were no events in Belgium this month or this week. However, um, Prince Gabriel, who is King Philippe and Queen Mathilde's second son, celebrated his 18th birthday. To mark that occasion, the Belgian royal household released three new photos and shared his next steps in education because he finished his um, international baccalaureate degree um, this year and is now going to start a new school. It's a like science and technology um, kind of year-long program in the UK. Um, but I'm not going to go into too much detail on it. So, and here's why. It kind of snuck up on me that I would have to make this decision. In all honesty, like I made this decision earlier today because I realized I had to. So, my rule has always been, I will talk about the monarch, their consort, the heir to the throne, and then if the heir to the throne has children. Now, I have always said that I talk about young royals who are children of monarchs. However, 18 is adult, um, and so... Should Prince Gabriel do any events on his own, any updates on his education or training, I will not share. Um, and this is the first time that I have had to make this choice for a family that isn't the British royal family. And it is also the last time I have to make this choice for a couple of years. I mean, the choice is made. This is how this will continue. Um... But, like, I will still talk about siblings to the heir to the throne because they are all underage. And typically, even with Gabriel, he is going to be at events with his family. And I will, of course, talk about him in that context. But he is no longer going to be someone, like, I highlight on Instagram. So I did make a birthday edit for his 18th birthday um, that I'm really, really happy with. And I'm not going to take it down or anything like that. But I'm not going to make any more for him. Like, he's not in my birthday calendar for next year because he's not going to be a royal. I continue to update on their individual events. Um, but just like I have done in the British royal family, um, of course, 2020 and 2021 have been very strange. But, like, I have talked about the Duke of Sussex or Prince Harry um, they're the same person. I realize I said that kind of funny, but like I have talked about him when he's at an event with his brother. Um, and I would continue to do that with Gabriel as well. Um, it's not like a full on blackout on him. Like it's just truly, I, it's hypocritical of me to talk about him and not talk about the British Royal, like siblings. So this is where we're at. Um, a happy birthday to him, truly, um, but I just wanted to give that update on, like, oh, this is what I'm doing, um, and it, it's truly something that snuck up on me. I've known since I made my birthday calendar, like, at the beginning of this year that this was going to happen. Um, like, I knew he was turning 18. It just didn't really dawn on me until today when I was, like, writing out my outline for the past couple of days that, oh right, I need to communicate this and make that decision. Um, it was an easy decision to make because it's in line with what I'm doing with the British royal family. It just hasn't impacted any of the other families because the heirs are all adults and I talk about their children. Um, but I will cease to do that when their second child or third child, whatever, turn 18. Um, and that is truly for me just like I've talked about this, right? Like it keeps it easy for me, um, not easy, but like it keeps it simpler. So instead of tracking like 20 people in the British royal family, I'm tracking five um, 
in the same thing. And, like, the Swedish royal family, like, you know, I'm not tracking Carl Philip, too. Like, I'm tracking King Carl Gustav, Queen Sylvia, Crown Princess Victoria, Prince Daniel, and their children. Like, that's it. Um, and it's just a way to simplify that and make it not get long, especially now that these episodes are getting longer, um, than they were when I first started. And also, um, the pandemic affected that a lot too. I'm not going to lie. Um, and so did like decisions from the Duke and Duchess of Sussex in January of 2020. Like they decided that they didn't want to be a part of the working members of the royal family and I respected that and I like decided that I would not talk about them because that was it seemed like what they wished at least um and so I stopped and so like all of those things together made me really streamline who I talked about um so just a little update there um but the photos were fantastic of Gabriel they even shared and I haven't posted these um but like some never before seen photos or at least I had never seen them of him um younger and also him recently on like a sailboat um sailing like I don't know just some cool family photos um to really mark the important occasion of an 18th birthday um but, you know, a distinct difference between his older sister's 18th birthday and his, um, which, of course. So, I just wanted to bring all of that to an update. And now we are going to move to the Danish royal family as there have been no updates from the British royal family this week. At least to my knowledge. I haven't seen any. So, in Denmark, you guys, it was a week for Denmark. It was a really busy week um, as Denmark and Copenhagen were hosting Copenhagen 21, which is basically, it was the intersection intersection of World Pride being held in Copenhagen, as well as the Euro Games of 2021 being held in Copenhagen. I don't know if those two, they don't, they can't be, like, I don't think they always happen in the same country, but they did this time around. Um, so they called the whole thing Copenhagen 2021 that Crown Princess Mary became the patron of a couple of years ago. And so she took part in a lot of events to around this Copenhagen 2021. So I'm going to share kind of some of the events that she attended. Um, and I'm going to make it fairly short um, because it's like one big event that had multiple different days. So we're going to start on Monday. Um, she took part in the opening of the Copenhagen 2021 Human Rights Forum. Um, so this was also happening at the same time as part of World Pride, um, which is the global pride celebration for LGBTQ+, which is the acronyms that I use. I'm not sure if those are the complete correct acronyms and I um, or letters. I apologize if I'm missing something or I'm excluding you. Those are the ones that I use primary. I use LGBTQ plus as my um, acronym. Like that's what I say. Um, and I'm really sorry if I'm missing out on someone. If I am, please like send me a message on my website or Instagram and I will correct myself. Um, but it's just the one I hear the most and the one that I have used the most um, recently, at least. Previously, I used LGBT. I don't even know that I had the Q in there for a while. Um, but now I do. And I use that plus to incorporate everyone else. But I understand the um, desire to be included with your letter that you identify with as well. So, um, just a little like, I want to be inclusive, but this is what I use. So, um, of course that was a huge component is human rights in this. Um, a lot of the conversation on that opening night and the second day were on the unfortunate circumstances that are happening in Afghanistan right now, which is a very political thing that I'm actually not going to talk about. Um, I just wanted to bring it up that it was discussed at this forum um, as the really big tragic events were happening um, at the beginning of the week. So 
that was definitely on this seminar or this conference's radar, um, as well as obviously on the global radar too. But it is already being discussed as human rights violations and concerns, um, especially for the rights of women and girls in um, in Afghanistan run by a Taliban government. So that's what I'm going to say on that. Um, I know previously I've, I've not shied away from talking politics, but I haven't, one, I haven't decided completely where I land on this, and two, um, I don't really want to do that. Um, sometimes certainly I will, but like, I don't want to as much. Um, I think if you've listened to the podcast for a year, you know where I am on a lot of issues, and that's fine, and I'm happy. I'm very public about that. Um, but I also, this is a royal podcast and not really a political podcast, obviously. Um, even though the two are sometimes very similar, um, I I need to shy away from that a lot more, and I know that. Um, okay, so that was Monday. Um, also during the day, um, Crown Princess Mary held uh, an, a meeting with representatives from the UN Population Fund, which is another organization that she is patron of and works with um, a lot. So then the second day, she took part in the Human Rights Conference again. Um, this time, her speech addressed the way the pandemic has affected global equality, which of course is massive um, in every realm. You know, it's even in these first world countries like the US, the UK, etc. Um, women have taken the brunt of change due to the pandemic. Um, but in countries such as like third world developing countries, um, women have shared that brunt of, you know, being forced to juggle more things with their children and work, but also like girls education centers were not open because of COVID. Um, and there was no education, like in a third world country, there isn't online learning. Um, there's just not. And so girls education like that, it just stopped. And I, I'm not sure if it has resumed yet in all honesty. Um, and so that was the big, big topic of the second day of the human rights conference. But again, a touch on the effects of, um, the situation, the ongoing situation in Afghanistan. Um, Wednesday, Crown Princess Mary attended a reception hosted by the city of Copenhagen to celebrate the Copenhagen 21, 2021 events. Um, on Thursday, Frederick and Mary both together met with the president and first lady of Iceland who are in Denmark, who were in Copenhagen for Copenhagen 2021. Um, and then Friday, Mary visited some of the, like, sporting events that were happening uh, in connection to the Euro Games this year. And then on Saturday, she attended the closing ceremony for Copenhagen 2021 and took part in, like, the early part of the after parties um, to mark the end of World Pride and Copenhagen 2021 in general. Um, so it's not like she was, like, partying at dark the pictures are still in daylight so it was probably fairly early still um but you know a good time all around so those were all of the events around Co Copenhagen 2021 I know I ran through those pretty quickly um but there were a lot of them and so I wanted to share them all together you can check out my website uh thedailyroyal.com to see like little snippets of information as well as as, of course, like the Danish Royal Household website, um, which has some really good information. And if you use Google Chrome, it can translate everything to English for you if that is your primary language. Um, if it is not, it, you, you, it can translate to all languages. Um, I just, of course, speak English. So, um, in terms of other events, Crown Prince Frederick did have a few other things going on this week. So on Monday, he was still serving as regent while Queen Margrethe traveled back from her vacation in France. Um, so he met with some new ministers in the government, um, as well as an outgoing meeting with the 
former Minister of Culture and Church Affairs for Denmark. Um, they didn't share, at least on the website, what ministers he was meeting with, like what incoming ministers he would, was meeting with. I assume a minister of culture and church affairs was included, but I don't know. Um, and I couldn't find any information in some of the sources that I use for that. Um, so that was Monday, and then we are jumping for Frederick to yesterday, which was Saturday, um, he visited the Rockwool Denmark Sailing Grand Prix, um, which is a sailing competition taking place on the Aarhus, 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 I think is the German way of saying that, but I'm going to say it like that, um, bay, so it was an international sailing competition. The Australian team won, um, which was kind of interesting because Frederick is married to an Australian woman, so he seemed to be okay with the Australian win. Um, of course, sad about Denmark's non-win, but he took a picture with the Australian team and the Australian flag, um, and it was great. It was it looked really fun. Um, <laughs> All the pictures that I've seen of, like, sailing in the past couple weeks make me want to sail, which is an absurd thing to want to do. I have no idea how I would sail. Like, I, first of all, I live in a landlocked state, and I have no water near me anywhere. <laughs> like, I have a river, <laughs> kind of. Um, but anyway, so, but now I want to go sailing, which is silly. Um, so that was, it was just a really fun week for Denmark and the Danish Royals. Um, there was a lot going on. There was the announcement that public audiences with Queen Margrethe are going to resume starting in September, which is a huge deal because they have been canceled since like April. Um, and these are something that I think happen every other week or every month. And the only way I can relate this to is, um, if you've ever seen, and if you're listening to this podcast, I'm fairly sure you have seen The Princess Diaries 2, where Mia is learning how to be queen, and they take part in this, like, audience, essentially, where they're wearing their tiaras, and someone has a chicken for the table. Like, it's it's like that, where they talk about their issues or whatever they need, or it's also something celebratory, etc. Um... <laughs> But that's like the only way I can relate it. I don't think Margaretha wears a tiara during the process, but, or chases a chicken, but it's very similar, um, I think, <laughs> at least from the picture, the few pictures I've seen. Um, so anyway, we'll have some of that upcoming. Um, it's really nice to see other countries kind of working through this pandemic, um, second, this Delta variant wave, and just all the changes that are happening constantly. Um, you know, sometimes it feels like here in the States, we just don't have it together. And we don't, um, arguably, I'm aware. But um, it's really nice to see other countries being able to resume public things, um, especially as I don't think the U.S. will shut down again, but it feels like maybe it should. So anyway, that is some updates from Denmark. And now we're moving on to Norway, where again, we had a series of events as Scandinavia is just fully returning to work. Um, so all of these events are different um, and there's no way to pick the most important ones, which is fine. Um, so I'm going to go through them, but I'm going to go through them kind of quickly because I'm aware of time. Um, so on Monday, Queen Sonia attended the opening of a new school building um, for the Russo Luca Luca. I don't know, uh, school, which is celebrating its 150th anniversary this year, um, which sounds really like a lot. And then I remembered that like, I went to middle school in a building that when I was in the middle school was over 120 years old, I think. Um, and was really old and it was really bad. Um, it, the building has now been torn down, which tells you how bad it was because, I mean, I was in middle school like 20 years ago. <laughs> no, not that many years ago. Uh, 15 years ago? Something like that. Yeah, about 15 years ago. And, but still, it has been torn down for a couple of years now. 
um, which is necessary. So I was thinking 150 years is a long time, and then I'm like, well, I I went to school in a school district that has been around for at least 130 years now, 35 years at this point, if not more. Um, okay, so that was Monday. There was nothing on Tuesday. On Wednesday, Crown Prince Akun started um, visiting some districts in Norway. Um, he was, we'll talk about this in just a second, he was supposed to do more visits like this this week. Um, but he visited the Stov Stovner district, which is in Oslo. Um, and the focus of this, and I think all of these visits are really going to be their response to the pandemic. Um, so Stovner did a really cool thing and where they hired young people who were in like service industries who lost their job. Um, so they hired these young people to do various things through for the district in terms of COVID. So like food delivery, um, safety reminders in terms of like wear your mask, um, kind of policing, not policing, um, being responsible for people's safety um, in public kind of things, um, which I thought was really awesome. And they just did a lot of really cool things um, with the young people to one, pay them and keep their economy going in this district um, and also keep it very safe, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, so it was a really cool thing that the district did and he was able to meet with some of those young people as well as ver visit various organizations and businesses throughout the uh, district is what they called it. I think it's a municipality, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, then on Thursday... King Harald, Crown Prince Akun, and Princess Astrid, who is King Harald's sister, um, attended a lunch celebrating the liberation, which was hosted by the Norwegian government for veterans, as well as something called like history keepers. So I think people who were alive during that time, um, because of course the liberation was 75 years ago, 76, um, and people who s saw that are no longer really with us, with the world, um, because it was so long ago. So there was, um, a lunch given to them for, by the Norwegian government that I think was supposed to happen in 2020 for the 75th anniversary, but couldn't because 2020. Um, so King Harald gave a speech, or not King Harald, Crown Prince Akun gave a speech I said King Harald because it makes more sense, but Akun gave the speech where he thanked them for um, allowing future generations of Norwegians to continue to live in a free Norway um, because Norway was under Nazi control during most of the war. There was a, um, like an ongoing fight for Norway, but military leaders, political leaders, um, the king, the crown prince, fled and were based in England um, at the time to fight back from there in the best way they knew how. But when they returned to Norway, there was still, like, the king and the government was already still intact. Um, so it was a new process, but it was very, it worked. Um and then Friday, Queen Sonia had a couple of events, so she attended the anniversary celebration, the 200th anniversary celebration for the Norwegian Information Service Foundation, which is, it seems to be tied with the Church of Norway um, in that they own the foundation, own land um, in, like, church land as well as... Um, housing that was meant for p priests, um, but no longer do the priests have to live in those houses. Um, where I live, we call them like parsonage houses, um, where it's a house paid for by the church um, for the priest to live in. Now, it no longer is that way in Norway, um, and so those houses can go for, for rent, and then that rent can go back to the Church of Norway's um, collective fund. So that was really cool. Um, and then 
She also, in the evening, attended a concert organized by the Queen Sonia Music Competition, um, where four Norwegian soloists were performing um, just as a, like, celebration of the Queen Sonia music competition. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Um, and that brings us to the end of Nor- well, it's not. Okay. This is the thing I was going to update on. Sorry. I'm not sure. Oh, I see what happened. I didn't see it on my notes. Um, okay. So today it was announced by the Norwegian royal household that Princess Ingrid Alexandra has tested positive for COVID. Um, look, this happens. It's not really a surprise anymore when people are testing positive for COVID. Um, it just, it happens. And of course we would, I wish her a speedy recovery and that the, her symptoms and things like that are not too bad. Um, as well as the whole family, like health during this time, everyone else in the household has been tested and were negative. Um, however, because of this, the royal family, or Crown Prince Akun and Crown Princess Matamarit, have suspended their events at least for the first part of the week. Um, and there were supposed to be a lot of visits from Akun, um, as well as a celebration on the 25th, which is Wednesday, um, to mark Akun and Matamarit's 20th wedding anniversary. Um, those things have all been postponed right now. They're not canceled. They are postponed um, just until everything is free and clear. So not a huge deal, um, but I did just want to update on that as well. Um, and now we are moving on to Sweden, where there were a few things here to talk about. Um, there has been nothing in Spain. There's nothing scheduled in Spain for the next week. Um, I do expect maybe by the end of the weekend or into early next, the following week, um, not the end of this weekend, uh, that Princess Leonor will start her, her education in Wales. And it's expected that there will be some photos. So we'll share, I'll share that if it comes up. Um, but we'll see. That's just like a, a guess at this point. Um, okay. So in Sweden on Monday, King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia attended the celebration of the organization um, called Friends of Artists, where they delivered scholarships to artists and then attended a reception um, to celebrate the organization. Um, in the Earlier in the day, however, Queen Sylvia attended a digital steering group meeting for the World Childhood Foundation with Princess Madeline, who is um, a huge part of World Childhood. She, I think, sits on the board of the U.S., um, organization World Childhood and is a huge member of the Swedish version as well, of course. Um, and then we go through most of the week without any events. And then Friday. So on Friday, and this is going to be hard in the next couple of days, in the next week, because I'm taking a break. But once the break is over, we'll get really intense on this. So the Swedish royal family will be doing a tour of all 21 counties in Sweden. Um, that started on Friday with King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia visiting Kalmar County, which includes the island of Oland, Oland which is where they are, um, where their summer vacations are. I think they're still on the island um, celebrating summer, but... Um, they are traveling. Um, so they traveled to like the main part of Sweden, not the island part, um, to visit Kalmar County. They visited, um, they visited lots of different places. First, they had meetings about the situation, the pandemic situation in the county um, through the past year and a half now. Um, they also learned about the vaccination efforts of the county. Um, they visited a residential care center that focused on um, building relationships between elderly seniors and young children because it is proven that those two things together are really beneficial to both parties. So for elderly, it keeps them um, a little more, bit more mentally engaged and mentally intact. And for young people, um, 
it gives them like a sense of longevity, um, someone who cares for them, like unconditionally, etc. It's really important. Um, so they visited there. They visited a restaurant to learn about the business industry where they had a meeting. Um, they vi- visited a, po- a secondary school to talk about education in the middle of a pandemic. Um, a hockey arena, which of course has been, um, sport has been a, a heavily impacted by COVID um, in terms of audience and spectators and even the way you practice sport um, has been a huge thing. And then they also visited the cathedral to, again, talk about um, religious gatherings during COVID, how that has worked, um, what steps we're at now, kind of now, not that the pandemic is over. I don't think we're ever going to be out of this, it feels like. Um, You know, a year and a half in, it just never feels like it's going to end. But like now that we've adapted and can adapt a little more quickly to things, certain countries can at least. Um, Mine is not one of them. Um, But you can kind of talk about all of those changes over the past year and a half for a um, religious gathering, a religious organization. So they did a lot of different uh, things. I'm going to say this. Um, Here's like my comment, right? Um, So Queen Sylvia, during the visit to the residential center, had a face shield on, okay? I wear a face shield now in my job, um, which I don't want to go into too much, but I am in a pool for my entire work day, which is great, and I love it. Um, But I wear a face shield because you can't really swim in a mask and talk with a mask on loudly to people, so I can't do that. Um, So I wear a face shield, and I look awful in a face shield. And somehow... Queen Sylvia, and I don't know if it's her magic hair or what, but she looks amazing. Like, I look like garbage in a face shield, and she still looks as regal and amazing as ever. Like, obsessed. I love it. Um, And I just, like, the minute I saw those photos, so I came back from work, and I had, you know, pool water hair and just was gross. And I'm like, yeah, I want to look like that in a face shield. Now, obviously, our roles are very different, but I still was like, I want to look like that in a face shield. Um, So that was really cool and just something I wanted to comment on. Um, Okay, and then we get to yesterday on Saturday. um, King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia took part in the Swedish Royal Rally. Okay, so I saw this and I'm like, what the heck is this thing? Um because it didn't happen in 2020. And if I'm being honest, in 2019, I wasn't, even before 2019, I didn't really care what King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia were doing. Um, Not that I still don't, but like, they still aren't the ones who I'm the most interested in, in the Swedish royal family, for sure. Um, In fact, none of like the elderly royals really spark my interest too much. just because I don't identify with their time and their, I just don't get it completely. Um, So this was an interesting event that I was like, what is this going to be? Well, it turns out that it's kind of like a car show, but also like car parade of vintage cars that started on King Carl Gustav's 50th birthday. So people came together to buy the King, like this really old car. Um, which like, this is why I don't identify with older royals because what, okay, anyway, um, so now there is this annual like parade of donors, um, and their vintage cars throughout the island of Oland. Um, and then it all culminates in a rally essentially at the at Soledin, which is the um, Swedish royal family's residence on the island. And it just looked really fun. Um, It was really strange, but I I don't care about cars one iota. I do think old cars are really cool, um, but, like, I don't care about them. 
so but it was a really cool event that like is very different than the norm um, so that was yesterday, and I thought that was really awesome. Um, and they do have some events scheduled for this week, too. So we've got a couple more um, tours happening this week. I think Victoria and Daniel are doing one, and I think Carl, King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia are doing another one this week. Um, one's on the 24th and one's on the 25th, but I don't, I don't know the exact anything. Um, hopefully... We get through more than three this time around. Um, this is attempt number two at doing this for the Swedish royal family. They did a couple. Um, they did three last summer. I think they started in September, late September. Um, and that's about when the big second wave really started. Um, you know, we had kind of gotten through summer and things were good. Um, and then people started going back inside and back to school. And so those cases increased again. And so they chose to cancel the rest of the dates to reschedule. Um, and now we, here we are a year later. So <laughs> we'll get there. Hopefully, people. Hopefully, we will get there. So that is going to be ongoing. And that brings us to the end of this episode. I will talk to you all next week. So I will still record um, next Sunday. I will... <laughs> I will prepare my outline and stuff on Sunday. I'm just not going to do anything early um, throughout the week because I need a break. So I'm going to take a week break, kind of like a vacation. I'm still working my day job, um, but I'm going to get like my life in order and work on some other things behind the scenes for the podcast and the plans I have for everything. Um, and hopefully all of that can be done by the end of the week. Not all of it, but some of it. Um, so with that, I will sign off for this week and I will talk to you all on August 30th. Have a fantastic week. Bye.